Hey guys, in this video, we'll be doing the N ion test, the test for negative ions. If you're looking for cat ion test, I already have a video on that. Please do check it out. The link is in the description below. I'll also leave a card at the end of the video so you can click on it directly. Let's get to N ion test. We're going to be covering the test for four N ions, and that is carbonate, chloride, sulfate, and nitrate. Let's start with carbonate. Here you need to understand the reaction between carbonate and acids. I've done a video on that as well. I'll leave the link in the description. The acid reacts with the carbonate to form carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is released and what is left is salt and water. So remember we are starting out with a sample, a test sample. We don't know what the ion is in the test sample. So all we have to do is add 2 cm cube of 2 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid. We add hydrochloric acid, any acid would do. But when you add acid, for example, hydrochloric acid, what will happen is carbon dioxide will be released from the reaction between the acid and the carbonate, more specifically between the hydrogen ion and the carbonate ion. Carbon dioxide gas will be released. Now, how do we confirm that carbon dioxide gas is released? First observation is you will see that a colorless gas is released. But a colorless gas can be many things such as oxygen or hydrogen gas. So to confirm that it is indeed carbon dioxide gas, we have to pass the gas evolved through lime water. And this is the test for carbon dioxide gas. When you pass the gas evolved through lime water, what you will get is the lime water will turn cloudy. And this is how we confirm the presence of carbonate ion in our test sample. Now how about if it was chloride ions? Chloride ions and sulfate ions work based on the same principle. It is on the principle of precipitation, the formation of a precipitate. Both will form white precipitate. If you're not sure about your precipitation, you're unclear, I've also done a video on that. The link is in the description below. Please do check it out. Now, for the rest of the test, carbonates are mostly insoluble. Most carbonates are insoluble, except for the snap salts. Soluble and insoluble salts, I also have a video on that. But all carbonates, except for the snaps, are insoluble. Therefore, if we add our reagents that we are about to add, you will also get a positive result. Let me explain that in more detail. So first, let's look at the chloride test. In order to eliminate that false positive due to the presence of the carbonate ions, what we do is, first we add some acid. So in this case, we are going to add 2 cm cube of 2 mole per dm cube nitric acid. The reason we add nitric acid, of course you could add any acid, but the reason we add nitric acid is because we want the N ion present to be the same as in the reagent. We are using silver nitrate, so we use nitric acid. That's all. But we cannot use hydrochloric acid because, once again, that will create a false positive. You want to test if the test sample has chloride ions. So you cannot add chloride ions into the test sample. Hydrochloric acid will produce chloride ions. Therefore, you cannot use hydrochloric acid here. Now, what is the reason for the nitric acid? The nitric acid is to remove any carbonate ions because if carbonate ions were present this nitric acid would react with the carbonate ions and carbon dioxide will be produced and the carbonate ions will be gone there will be no more carbonate ions to give us a false positive now second step is to add the reagent for chloride ions we add silver nitrate now as you would probably already have guessed the reason for this is when silver ions are present silver ions ag plus are present in the test sample now if there are chloride ions in the test sample what will happen is this silver ions will react with the chloride ions to form the insoluble precipitate of silver chloride so this will form a white precipitate and what is the white precipitate form it is simply silver chloride so if a white precipitate forms this will confirm the presence of chloride ions because chloride ions are able to react with what we added silver nitrate to form the white precipitate so let's think about carbonate again if carbonate ions were present we would still get the same observation because carbonate ions will also react with silver to form insoluble silver carbonate therefore the first step was to add acid to remove the carbonate ions now the same principle applies to the sulfate test as well let's look at the sulfate test for the sulfate test, the first step is the same. This time we're going to add hydrochloric acid because we are adding barium chloride later on. So we want the anion to be the same. So we use hydrochloric acid. 
and the hydrochloric acid's purpose is to remove any carbonate ion that might be present so as to avoid a false positive result and then we add barium chloride this time so barium chloride the ion that is involved in the reaction is of course barium sulfate will react with barium let's write that down barium ea2 plus barium ion if there are sulfate ions in the test sample what will happen this will react with the barium ions so for 2 minus this is aqueous to form barium sulfate barium sulfate is an insoluble white precipitate once again the result is a white precipitate but this time the white precipitate is actually barium sulfate so if sulfate ions were not present in the solution for example if chloride ions were present in the solution it would not form a precipitate it forms a precipitate with sulfate ions once again if carbonate ions were present in the solution it would still give us a false positive therefore we've already dealt with that by removing all the carbonate ions with the addition of acid as the first step and finally we have the nitrate ion the nitrate ion is the most complicated in order to test for presence of nitrate ion the first step is the same we add some sulfuric acid this time because our reagent is going to be iron 2 sulfate so we add sulfuric acid at the beginning and then the second step is to add one more per dm cube of iron 2 sulfate so iron 2 sulfate is just FeSO4 iron 2 sulfate solution once you add the iron 2 sulfate solution you need to shake the iron 2 sulfate and the test sample mixture shake it once you've shaken it, then the third step is very important. We add concentrated sulfuric acid. So initially we added 1.0 mole per dm cube sulfuric acid. Now we add corn sulfuric acid. When you add concentrated sulfuric acid, there's a method to it. You need to add the acid. You have to tilt the test tube. So this is the mixture. Here we have, in here we have the iron 2 sulfate test sample we have the test sample plus we have iron 2 sulfate solution already mixed already shaken now what we do is you add the concentrated sulfuric acid drop by drop along the walls of the container along the walls of the test tube so you add drop by drop now the positive result here would be a brown ring forms you will see a brown ring forming if a brown ring forms then the test is positive and this indicates the presence of nitrate ions this is a brown ring now since the positive result is a brown ring this test is also known as the brown ring test brown ring test is used to test for the presence of nitrate ions so once again let's go through all four First, we have the carbonate test. The carbonate test is also used, the principle of the carbonate test is also used later on for chloride and sulfate and nitrate test. The carbonate test is simple, we just add acid and from the reaction between acid and carbonate, carbon dioxide gas is produced and we test the gas to confirm that it's carbon dioxide by passing through lime water, that's all, that's the test. If indeed carbon dioxide is released, then this confirms the presence of carbonate ions in the test sample. So the setup here is actually like this. You have your test sample in a test tube. So this is the test sample. This is the sample. What we do is you fit it with a rubber bung and a deliver delivery tube. This delivery tube will carry whatever gas evolved to another test tube which contains lime water. So this is where our lime water is. And so once the gas is evolved from this side, from the reaction between acid and carbonate, the gas is evolved, colorless gas is evolved, the gas will pass through the delivery tube and into the lime water. When the gas passes through the lime water, you will have, it will become, turns cloudy, cloudy or milky or chalky. So that's what's happening here. For the chloride test and the sulfate test, it is basically testing for the presence of a precipitate, a white precipitate. If a white precipitate forms, then the result is positive. But what we are doing at the beginning to ensure that there is no false positive with carbonate ion is we are adding acid first. First step is to add acid and remove any carbonate ions that might be present in the sample solution. 
and then we go to the nitrate test. The nitrate test is also known as the brown ring test. Here, this is the most complicated out of all of them. First, we add acid as usual. This time, we're using sulfuric acid because we're going to use iron 2 sulfate. Now, when we add iron 2 sulfate and shake, after that, the last step would be to add concentrated sulfuric acid drop by drop along the walls of the test tube. Positive test is a brown ring spot. I hope this helps, guys. Please do help me and hit that like button. It really does help me. Thank you very much for doing that. I really appreciate it. If you enjoy videos like this, do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one a week. If you think it's helpful, do share it with your friends. You never know who might benefit from this. Thank you guys and see you in the next video.